Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I want to show you how to create a gradient feather in Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, I'll go over how to set text on an image, use a gradient feather, as well as apply InDesign Select Subject Text Wrap. So let's get started. All right, so let me show you how the gradient feather effect works. This is great when you're adding text to an image, especially an image that may have a distracting background or a busy background like you see here. Also, I'm gonna go over how to set a select subject text wrap in InDesign. What this does, it allows you to add a text wrap to an image without having to remove the background beforehand. InDesign will pick up the edges of your subject, it'll detect the, the subject in an image. And so this is easier than having to go remove a background um, to, to apply a text wrap. Okay, so let's get started here. You can see we're gonna recreate what you see on the screen here. I've left some space down below, so let's go ahead and start laying this out. As a first step, I'm just gonna bring my image, my main image over. So I just pull it on the page um, and then click and drag. If you want to actually have the frame adjusted to the exact size of the page, just hold shift when you're dragging out. Then you can actually drag out how you want it and go right to the edge. And then just click on the, uh, the content grabber or the do donut and then adjust the image how you want it. So I want to get it something like this to add more space to the, to the right here. So this is where we're going to add the headline and then just a little lead in um, or the article uh, that you want to place, the text. Okay. So why don't I go ahead and add the headline and then I'll add the text and then as a next step I'll show you how to apply the gradient feather. So I do have the, um, the text here and I'll just grab all of it. I'm just going to create a text frame and then drop that just paste it right in and right now I'm just gonna go to my paragraph styles and say basic paragraph I don't want any style on this so if you want to strip the formatting out of any text when you bring it bring it over especially if you're copy and pasting it or bringing it in from a word document you might have the the formatting carry over with it to strip that all out just put your cursor in there command or control a to select everything um, oftentimes you may have to hold your option or alt key on windows and then just click basic paragraph that will strip all the formatting out and it'll default to the minion pro um, text that you see here so that's good um, i'm gonna just select soup is on so that's the headline and i'll paste it into its own uh, text frame there Okay, and what I'm going to do is just bring this text down. And I've gone ahead and actually created a paragraph style called body text for this. And what I'm using here, the font is called Canela. Uh, it's a really nice typeface, one that I really like. So I went ahead and used that. And the headline is actually the same font. And it's called main headline. So what I'll do is, because it's probably too big, um, I'll bring this down. And what I did with this, I already created a color for it, but I want the bottom portion here to have um, just a lighter tint to it. So I'm just selecting is on, and I'll make that, let's say 70%, just so you get some nice contrast there. Yeah, that looks good. All right, I'll put my guides back on. Now you can snap them. I, I've created guides previously, so that's good. I may move them off those guides or uh, move the subject in the image after the fact, but let's go ahead now and create the gradient feather. I'll show you how that works. All right, so I've gone ahead and added the text on the image, but as you can see, because the image background is so distracting, it's quite busy, it's hard to read that text on top. What I'm going to do is grab the rectangle frame tool. I'm going to click that. And as a starting point, I'm just going to draw out a frame that covers the text as well as the headline. 
And in this case, I'm going to make it white. You can also have a black uh, gradient feather, but I found with this image in particular, I thought that the uh, just making it white looks uh, looks pretty good as well. So as you can see, um, it covers everything. So I'm just going to send it backward. And I used the, sh the keyboard shortcut there. So I used command and left square bracket, right square bracket would bring it forward. Um, you don't want to send it to the back because it would send all the way behind the image. But if you wanted to use the long form way of doing it, just go to object, arrange, and then bring forward or send backward, okay? So now that I have that in place, I'm gonna click on that frame that I just created. And in my properties panel or the effects panel, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna click on the effects icon here. I'm gonna make my way down to gradient feather. That's gonna bring up this window here. I'm just gonna pull it off to the side, but you could already see that a gradient feather has been applied. Just make sure that you have your preview checked on here. So you can see what you're doing in real time. Now you can see the gradient stops go from black to white. I'm just gonna reverse these. I'm gonna drag the black one all the way to the right. I'll drag the white one all the way to the left. This way I get a fade from white and then it'll just blend right in. I'm gonna grab the mid slider here and drag it to the left a little bit. You can see what's happening here. Um, you can see that it's actually covering it and it's creating that gradient feather while you're sliding these gradient stops. Or in this case, I'm dragging the mid slider. Okay. And you want to make sure that you are working on a linear um, gradient feather and not radial, unless that's, of course, what you would want. So you can see the text is a lot easier to, to read now because I've applied that. I'm just gonna drag it a little bit more and it's okay if you start, um, it's okay if some of the image background is covered a bit, you still get that blend there, which is great. So I'm gonna click okay and you can see that I get a nice gradient feather blend here. And oftentimes if you see a hard line here, then you would have to go back and adjust the gradient feather. If at any point you do want to adjust it or edit it, just click on it once with your selection tool and then you could see next to the effects icon here i can click that gradient feather and edit it and by the way you could change the angle of it you could see if i rotate this the feather is rotating so when i said the hard line there if i went something like this for instance minus 26 hit okay you could see right here there's a hard line so i'm just going to hit command z and go back to what I had because now you don't see that hard line there, okay? And you have a nice, really nice transition and more importantly, you can read the text. So I'm just gonna grab both of these. I'm gonna click on Soup is On, hold my shift key, click the body text and move it just slightly to the right, okay? That's good for now. And actually what I did here, if I put my cursor in the front of the first paragraph, I also added a paragraph style for drop cap body text. I could select just that the letter there if I wanted to. It's being finicky, but that's okay. And just give it that uh, purple color that I had in the headline. Okay. And you could also change the the font uh, um, style as well. So if you want to make that a sans serif, you could. Okay. So now, just to add a little bit more um, to this layout, I wanna add a select subject text wrap to the subject here and have just a nice little text wrap with this little piece of text that I have on the page. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, so as a final step, I do wanna add a text wrap to this layout. And for this, we're gonna be using the select subject text wrap. So what I wanna do is click on the image first I'm going to go to window and text wrap to open my text wrap window. I'm just going to pull it off to the side here. And you can see in the top, you have some options on what type of wrap you want. So I do want wrap around object shape. I'm going to click that and you'll notice that the headline as well as the 
text frame with the body text disappears. That's okay, don't worry, there's just another step you have to take here. In the contour options down below, it's going to default as same as clipping. So I'm going to click that for the drop down options. And in the past, you would probably try detect edges. That doesn't do a great job in detecting the subject edges. Um, so now InDesign has a select subject option. So I'm going to click that. It's going to take a couple seconds to detect the edges and detect the subject in my image here. All right, so you can see that the select subject contour option is in effect now. You'll see all these anchor points around your subject that InDesign has picked up. And you can see as a default, it defaults to zero as the offset. So I'm just going to increase it a little bit. Don't worry about the headline. I'll show you how to fix that in a second. So once you get the wrap that you want, that looks like a comfortable wrap. So I'm just gonna pull this off to the side. And so the reason the reason that the text or the headline disappeared is because the text wrap is, is pushing that text away in the headline. So if you ever want to ignore a text wrap on a text frame, just hold your option key and double click on the on the text frame. Okay? And then there's an option here. I'm just gonna move this off to the side. There's an option here to ignore the text wrap if I hit the preview. So any text wrap will not affect this text frame now. So that's a good way of getting around that. And I'm gonna hit okay. And there you have it. That's a cool way of not only adding a gradient feather, but using the select subject text wrap to put together a, a really nice editorial design layout. So that's one method on how to create a gradient feather while also applying the select subject text wrap in Adobe InDesign. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new videos have been posted. If you'd like to learn more about InDesign, go ahead and click the playlist above.